Hello, my name is Richard Pearson. I'm a Chartered Civil Engineer. I'm currently Director of Highways on the Isle of Man and I'm presenting the editorial for the December 2013 edition of the Municipal Engineering Journal. MUIN is the Institution of Civil Engineers Journal for showcasing best practice in municipal engineering from around the world. The December 2013 edition is a general edition includes papers on sewer design and refurbishment, highway maintenance and pavement energy harvesting and regeneration and also procurement. It takes us from India to the Middle East and uh, then to Europe. The first article is a briefing on sustainable drainage for sports pitch developments by Simpson, Fleming and Frost uses the flow pod measurement system to show that discharge from drained sport pitch developments is in the range of 0-10% of rainfall and therefore uh, may reduce the total flow output to be managed from developments and that may have economic implications and benefits for developments of that sort. The next article is a paper, Hydraulic Design and Engineering Aspects of Combined Sewers by Day. His paper highlights the seasonal nature of rainfall in Kolkata, previously known as Calcutta, uh, which receives more than 1600 millimetres of its annual rainfall between July and September each year. The paper proposes stricter uh, and more accurate controls around drainage design based on Manning's equation uh, to help ensure capacity is available during the peak times. The next paper is called Rehabilitation of Calcutta's First Victorian Age Brick Sewer by Batam Bazu, Baral, Kumar Mandel and Day. Uh, and they describe the refurbishment of a main sewer in Calcutta. The paper brings out some interesting history, uh, including the origins of Calcutta from 1690. Uh, it includes the original identification of need for a main sewer and I particularly like the words unimaginably unhygienic and poor conditions had arisen and those reminded me of Bazalgette and London. Uh, sewers were constructed in Calcutta from 1868 but more recently these old sewers have been subject to regular blockage and collapse and obviously that has major economic implications for what is arguably the most densely populated urban area in the world. Uh, therefore, uh, consideration was given to their refurbishment and the method chosen was GRP segmental lining, that's glass reinforced plastic. Uh, importantly, that method is trenchless and obviously that makes it a lot more uh, uh, easy and cost effective to deliver that solution in such a densely populated area. Uh, the method uh, can support imposed loads. Uh, brings high levels of water tightness and that's important in uh, stopping uh, water uh, entering the groundwater system and polluting it. Also the new sewers have a very smooth bore and that improves their flow characteristics. The next paper is called the Proposed Integrated Road Surface Management System for Small Municipalities by Mubaraki. It investigates pavement management systems and proposes a simple vehicle mounted system for trials to assist jurisdictions in efficiently managing their networks. The paper includes useful descriptions of techniques and the principles of sound pavement management. The next paper is called Way Energy People, a new pavement energy harvest system by Duarte, Casimiro, Carrera, Mendes and Ferreira. It describes a new pavement energy harvest system developed in Portugal by the Waydip company. It may, along with other systems based on piezoelectrics, thermal energy collection, solar energy devices and electromagnetic devices such as this one, provide a means of harvesting energy from pedestrian and vehicle movements and also the sun to make electricity to power street lights, street signs and the like. It may therefore help meet emissions targets. 
Perhaps the system may be more viable where development densities are highest and where transmission costs are also therefore higher. Uh, and it may also be more viable with the advent of LED lighting. Interestingly, some of these systems rely on highway construction using untypical materials and I wonder about the cost benefit of some of those from a highway asset management perspective in that if they have improved longevity it may uh, contribute towards the viability of such systems. The next paper is Urban Regeneration of Knowledge Intensive Services by Plaza Galvez Galvez and Gonzalez Flores. The paper describes the regeneration of Bilbao in Spain, explores how massive infrastructure investment there led to the creation of jobs and leverage investment, and it analyzes that on a sector by sector basis, including knowledge intensive business services. The paper may be useful for other jurisdictions wishing to trigger regeneration of their areas. And finally, uh, the last paper is Procurement Clinics in Public Procurement and Urban Development. It's by Coronan and Vara, and it describes a procurement method trialled in Finland. The clinics, as they're called, provide for early contractor and designer involvement for a prolonged, funded, facilitated dialogue process. Critically, uh, and only if well managed and organised, the process may provide for more varied and innovative solutions better supplier engagement and it is argued uh, a shorter overall process.